Is LASIK worth it? Does it ever not work? LASIK is an amazing option for improving your vision, but it's not for everyone. Watch to learn the benefits of LASIK, the risk, what to expect, and also the weird thing LASIK has in common with missile tracking. LASIK stands for Laser Assisted In Situ Keratomilusis. LASIK involves using a laser to change the shape of the cornea on the front of your eye, which sounds freaky, but the procedure only actually takes a few minutes and it's not painful. It has a bunch of potential benefits. LASIK reports one of the highest satisfaction ratings of any elective surgery of about 96%. 70 to 90% of LASIK patients end up with 20-20 vision or better after treatment. So there's a high likelihood that your vision will improve and you won't have to deal with glasses or contacts anymore. I'd say that that convenience is the main benefit of LASIK. Most patients can resume normal activities after just a day or two, but the full healing process is around three to six months and your vision will gradually continue improving throughout that time. Back when LASIK was first introduced, it was just used to correct for nearsightedness or myopia. However, now it's advanced to correct for a lot of different refractive errors too, like farsightedness or astigmatism. The last benefit I'll talk about is long-term savings. It can cost up to $2,200 USD for LASIK in one eye or $4,400 USD for surgery in both eyes. However, after getting that, you no longer have to purchase glasses and contacts throughout the rest of your life, which can end up to a large amount of savings over the long term. However, LASIK is an elective procedure, so it's usually not covered by your health insurance, so you will have to pay for that initial surgery. Before I get to the risk involved with LASIK, I'd like to explain why blasting your eyeballs with lasers helps your vision in the first place. The way that your eyes work is that your cornea and the lens inside of your eye take in light from very far away and focus that light down onto your retina on the back of your eye. However, if your cornea is curved too much, it focuses the light sooner than it should. So it's coming to a point of focus inside of your eye. So by the time it reaches your retina, those lines have spread out and your vision becomes blurry. On the other hand, if your cornea is too flat, it is trying to focus the light too late. It's not bending it enough. So it hits the retina on the back of your eye before it comes to a focus. And again, the lines are spread out and your vision is blurry. LASIK eye surgery is using a laser to change the shape of that cornea so that you can move your vision directly back onto the retina exactly where it should be so you have nice crisp vision. All right, well so far I've just been talking about how amazing LASIK is, there are some risks involved, just like any surgery. Serious complications that can lead to a loss of vision are super rare. However, there are more temporary side effects that are much more common, such as dry eyes or glare. They typically clear up after a few weeks or months though. A decrease in tear production after the surgery can lead to dry eyes, which can make your vision a little worse and just be annoying. However, that can be treated using eye drops. It may also be harder to see at night after the surgery. This typically lasts for a few days to a few weeks. You'll have potentially increased light sensitivity, glare, and halos forming around bright points of light. It's also possible that your vision could be undercorrected through the surgery which means that not enough material was removed. This is more common for people using LASIK to deal with nearsightedness or myopia. If that's the case, you may need another procedure during the next year in order to remove that extra tissue. You could also be potentially overcorrected in which too much material is removed during the surgery. That's harder to fix than undercorrection. There's also a chance that you could have astigmatism introduced during the surgery by material being removed unevenly in different directions. Astigmatism just means that your eye focuses light differently in perpendicular directions. If that happens, it may require another surgery or potentially low power glasses or contacts to balance that out. There is a small chance of infection or even your vision returning to how it was prior to the surgery, but again, LASIK has an uncharacteristically high level of success compared to most other surgeries. Certain health conditions can increase the risk associated with LASIK eye surgery or just make the outcomes a little less predictable. These conditions include autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, a weakened immune system caused by HIV or certain medications, 
or chronically dry eyes. Some refractive errors of your eyes could even be too extreme to be corrected for using a technique like LASIK. So it's definitely a good idea to talk to your eye doctor when considering something like this to see if it's really a good fit for your specific eyes. If you're involved in a high contact sport where you might get hit in the face, you also might not be a good candidate for LASIK. Okay, let's say you weighed the pros and cons, talked to your eye doctor, and now you're actually ready to get LASIK. Here's what you can expect from the whole experience. You'll need to stop wearing contact lenses a few weeks before the surgery. That's because contact lenses can actually change the natural shape of your cornea. Your eye doctor will inspect your corneas to see what parts of them need to be reshaped. A scanning device is typically used to create a map of your corneas for this process. During the procedure, you lie back on a reclining chair. They may give you medicine to help you relax, and numbing drops are placed in your eyes. The doctor then uses an instrument to hold your eyelids open, and you'll feel some pressure from this, but it shouldn't include any pain. A suction ring is placed on your eye just before cutting a flap in your cornea. Your vision might dim a little bit because of that suction ring. That flap is cut using a laser or a small blade, and its purpose is to let your doctor reach the part of your cornea that is then going to be reshaped. A programmed laser then reshapes part of your cornea according to that map that was created by the scanning device. Each laser pulse removes a little bit of tissue, uh, so a tiny amount of your cornea itself is being removed. You may smell something similar to burning hair from the laser interacting with your eye. I know, that's kind of gross. The flap is then closed and usually heals on its own. During the surgery, you'll be asked to look at a certain point of light to keep your eyes in one direction. If you need LASIK in both eyes, you'll usually have both of those treated on the same day. Again, that surgery is surprisingly painless, but afterwards your eyes may itch or just be pretty watery. Right after the surgery, you'll have blurry vision, but you'll still be able to see. And then over the next few days, you'll be able to resume normal activities again, and over the course of the next few months, your vision will get gradually better until you fully heal in about three to six months. You might be given eye drops or medicine from your doctor and potentially asked to wear a cover over your eyes as you sleep just for a little bit as you heal. Follow-up appointments with your doctor will track your progress. You'll need to wait a few weeks though before putting makeup around your eyes or doing activities like swimming or really strenuous sports. People with a mild amount of nearsightedness tend to have the best results with LASIK. People with more extreme refractive errors can still have this kind of surgery at your doctor's discretion, but it's a little harder to correct for those types of conditions. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that LASIK eye surgery has something in common with missile tracking. So the eye tracking guidance technology used for LASIK is based on the exact same technology used by governments for tracking missiles. So even if your eye is just staring at that one point of light during the surgery, it's still near impossible to keep your eye completely still. But this guidance technology allows the laser to accurately follow any small movements of your eye so that you continue you know, blasting the right parts of your eye and don't remove any material that shouldn't be removed. While I hope that this video has been helpful, please contact your eye doctor to talk about LASIK if you're considering getting this to see if it's the right move for you, if it can help you ditch your glasses and contacts for good. Have any of you had LASIK? If so, please comment down below to help anyone watching this who may be looking for guidance, so please explain how your experience has been. And also, click to watch my previous video about what your glasses prescription really means and what's going on inside of your eyes. Thanks!